Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about all-in-one lenses. I'm going to cover 10 times when you really want to have that all-in-one lens attached to your camera body, and I'm going to also cover briefly three situations where an all-in-one lens wouldn't be correct and you'd want something different. So all-in-one lenses, of course, range from wide angle all the way out to telephoto. I have three here in front of me. I have a 16 to 300, that's for APS-C sensors. I have a 28 to 300, that's for full frame. And I also have a 28 to 200, that's also for full frame. So people wonder if all-in-one lenses are sharp. The answer is yes, if your technique is correct, all-in-one all -in lenses can be super sharp and they can give you fantastic results. The one on my Canon camera body is for full frame cameras. It's a 28 to 300 and you can see when I zoom, it's got that extending barrel and that looks a little bit silly. Some people don't like that, but don't let that bother you. These are quality lenses if you use proper technique. So come with me, let's look at these 10 times when you want to have that all-in-one lens attached to your camera. Tip number one for when I think you need an all-in-one zoom lens is for overseas travel photography. I take groups to Tuscany, and Tuscany is a great example of when an all-in-one lens is just perfectly convenient. And you just never know how the light's going to present itself. And so you don't want to spend time switching lenses. You can go in tight and get cityscapes with the all-in-one zoom. And then you can go and do wide-angle stuff when we have flowers or beautiful patterns in the fields. And it's great to have that all-in-one lens for the convenience of it. As I said, I've been to Tuscany many times with photo groups and one year I decided to take four lenses to cover that focal length from 28 to 300 rather than just the one. And that was a mistake that year. All I did was change lenses while everybody else in my group was getting the photos. And so from then on I went back to taking just my 28 to 300 and I've been very happy with the results. Another trip that I did in Europe was to the Provence area of France. And my wife and I were together and we just rented a car and drove all around the countryside. And we happened to be there during the lavender time, which is in July. And so I was able to get wide angle scenes at the 28 millimeter mark with my 28 to 300. And then I was also able to zoom in and compress the lines of lavender plus one or two trees off in the distance. And just to have that all-in-one zoom lens was very easy and convenient to travel around with. I didn't have to think about switching lenses when I went to photograph my wife sitting on a hay bale. Or there was this gorgeous farmhouse down below. And the shots almost looked like an aerial view. And with my 28-300, to I managed to capture several scenes that I really like out of that one particular area of Provence. Visiting Montenegro and Croatia in Eastern Europe was also a great place to have an all-in-one lens. I didn't want to carry a big camera bag around and so I just had my 28 to 300 and I was able to get both the whole entire city of Dubrovnik down below us, an island off the coast, and then the Bay of Kator in all different ways just by using the one lens. Here's a place called Sveti Stefan. And that was photographed, again, with my 28 to 300 at various focal lengths. And I could just be very precise with my compositions because I had that all-in-one lens. Tip number two for when I suggest you use an all-in-one zoom lens is when you're going to spend some time in the backcountry. I'm talking about backpacking or sea kayaking where you're spending the night on a beach somewhere far away from a motel room. And you don't want to carry a lot of stuff or you can't carry a lot of stuff. My wife and I were in New Zealand and we went on a three night sea kayaking adventure, self-guided, and we just had these little storage bins and obviously I couldn't bring a bunch of stuff. We had to have food and all of our provisions. So I just wanted to have one lens and I brought my 28 to 300. And we got some beautiful sunrises in that trip 
and we had some beautiful scenes which we hiked to when we left our canoe down in the bay and uh, we just had a great sea kayaking adventure and it was just perfect to have one lens that could do both wide angle scenes and some zoomed in photography of my wife paddling the boat and things like that. So that's when I suggest also using an all-in-one zoom lens. Another recent adventure was backpacking in North Cascades National Park in Washington State. And if you've ever been backpacking, you know that you try to reduce the amount of weight that you're carrying as much as possible. So it's just not fun to carry four or five lenses in order to cover that focal length from wide angle to telephoto. So for this trip, I chose Tamron's 16 to 300, and it was the perfect choice. It allowed me to get wide angle scenes of the mountains, some shots of my wife carrying her backpack, a waterfall, even some wildlife that we saw, and some detail stuff like the berries that we were picking every day to eat for breakfast. That 16 to 300 gave me a variety of focal lengths to get all of those shots and I didn't have to carry a ton of weight. Time number three when I think you need an all-in-one zoom lens is for walking around photography where you're just going to shoot on the fly and you don't want to change lenses and think about what lens to bring. You just want to have one lens. For example, you're going to photograph a fruit or vegetable market and then you're going to walk around on the streets and you never know what sort of still life is going to present itself. Here I am in Rome and I can also do a wide angle shot of the Colosseum. And then here's some shots from uh, Florence where I've got the cathedral and then I've got the Arno River with various focal lengths. And also here I am in Tuscany and I've got this same scooter and I photograph it numerous ways without having to change lenses. I'm just changing my position and zooming in and changing the focal length and it's much easier than changing lenses. Here's another example of this uh, time when I think you need an all-in-one zoom and that is just taking a walk down onto the beach. You don't want to have to be burdened with a bunch of lenses that are going to have to lay in the sand as you switch them up. So you just put on an all-in-one zoom lens, you walk down onto the beach and you get various shots, both wide angle and zoomed in, of those beach scenes. Time number four when I think you need an all-in-one zoom lens is when you're traveling with non-photographers. You're not going to have a lot of time to set things up and to change lenses, but you still want to get some shots. And so you want to have that all-in-one zoom lens ready to go. And a perfect example of this is when my wife and I went to Bolivia. We were traveling on this four-day trip all throughout Bolivia, and we were with a bunch of people that weren't photographers necessarily. And so we just had to take the shots that would come as they would come, and we were able to get great shots of the Salar de Yuyuni, which is the largest salt flat in the world. And we did sunsets there and sunrises, and we saw volcanoes and flamingos. And it was just great to have the one lens where I could just zoom in if an animal presented itself. This is a viscacha, kind of a weird looking rabbit type animal. And also I could do wide angle scenes of the beautiful scenery and I could zoom in on some of the details as well. Another example of when we were traveling with non-photographers but I still wanted to get some great shots was just on a day trip in Bora Bora and traveling around by boat with a bunch of people that were just regular tourists who had cell phones as their cameras and I wanted some quality images and so I brought my all-in-one zoom lens and was able to get some great shots even though we were traveling by boat and we're only there for a little while. Time number five when you need an all-in-one zoom lens is when camera bags aren't allowed. So you're not going to be allowed to bring all your lenses if bags aren't allowed or camera bags aren't allowed. Two examples of this that I can think of offhand are the Taj Mahal in India, 
You're definitely not allowed to bring a large camera bag in there. You can bring a camera and one lens attached to it, but you can't bring your camera bag into the Taj Mahal complex. The second example I can think of where this comes into play is in some of the cathedrals in Europe or towers that you climb where you want to get the overview of the city and they just don't allow camera bags because the space is so limited in those circular staircases and things like that. So perfect to have an all-in-one zoom lens for those situations. Time number six for when you need an all-in-one zoom lens is when you under inclement weather and the weather's doing something where you don't want to be changing lenses. Obviously if it's raining or if it's snowing it's not a good time to change lenses and so if you have the all-in-one snapped onto your camera you can get awesome shots. Here's a perfect example in Venice. We were with a group there and it just happened to be raining all day and so I was happy that I had just the all-in-one zoom lens on my camera. Another couple of examples of when it was snowing or raining and I was just able to just get the shots that I wanted because I was using the all-in-one zoom lens. Time number seven when an all-in-one zoom lens makes the most sense is when your subject works both with wide angles and with telephoto shots. Niagara Falls is a perfect example where I can go wide and get some great shots and then I can zoom in from the same position and get different shots that are just as equal and just as good and it just varies up my composition just by changing the focal length. Another good example of this is in Dubrovnik in Croatia. It's a great place to just have one lens, zoom in on the city down below from one of the overlooks up above on the hill, and you can get various compositions. Here's one with my wife sitting there looking over the city, and then various compositions of the boats passing by pieces of the city. A further example would be Mount Rushmore. You can stand in one place and you can get different views of the same scene with your all-in-one zoom lens. This is Vernazza in the Cinque Terre in Italy. And from just one position, I'm able to show the whole city. And then I'm able to zoom in on the detail of the boats down below in the harbor. And I'm able to get various scenes of the colorful umbrellas and the restaurants and the people walking along the shore. And then evening shots, all from the same position and all with one lens. Time number eight, when I suggest using an all-in-one zoom lens, is when you're under the fast-changing light conditions or a situation where things are changing quickly and you don't want to have to think, well, do I need a wide angle or do I need a zoom lens? You just put on your all-in-one and you can get both. A perfect example of this is one year in the Canadian Rockies, there were rainbows everywhere and the light was changing fast and I wanted to get both wide angles of those rainbows and some zoomed in shots as well and I was very happy to be using an all-in-one zoom lens. Anything like sunrise or a sunset situation where the light's changing by the second and you just want to be able to compose and get different compositions at uh, different focal lengths and you can just do that with an all-in-one zoom lens. Here I am in Glacier National Park, the light was changing very fast and I was able to get various scenes with my all-in-one zoom lens. Another example is twilight shooting where you don't have very much time. You get that night glow in the evening sky before it turns to black and you just have a few minutes to do that and you want to get various compositions. And so I highly suggest the all-in-one lens during those times. Time number nine, when I think an all-in-one zoom lens is perfect, is when you're doing family or kid photography. So kids move fast and you never know if they're going to give a funny expression where you just want to show a portrait of their face or when they're going to be do so doing something where you need a wider angle and it's just quick to have that all-in-one on the camera and you can just zoom in and show the details if you want 
or you can come back wider and show the whole scene including the sun or the flowers or the mountain or whatever it is that's presenting itself when your child or your wife happens to be doing something that you want to show. It's very convenient to have that all-in-one zoom lens. Time number 10 and my last tip or my last suggestion for when I think an all-in-one zoom lens is perfect is when you just don't know what will present itself. And I've got two places where this happens and when this happened to me and I was happy to have my all-in-one zoom lens. The first one is, is at a place called Plitvice and that's in Croatia and it was the first time I had ever been there and it's a series of waterfalls and you're hiking through the back country and you're sort of looking at things that you're not sure what's going to present itself around the next corner. And so I was happy to have an all-in-one zoom lens. I could go wide and I could show details and it was just great to have that all-in-one zoom. The other place is Yellowstone right here in the United States. It's a place where you've got wide-angle scenes of mountains and lakes and then geysers and you also might have flowers or wildlife and you might want to zoom in and get the detail of a geyser erupting or a reflection in a pool or some sort of hot spring. You just never know what's going to present itself when you're in Yellowstone. And so it's great to have a lens that can do a little bit of everything when you're there. So as you can see, there's lots of situations where an all-in-one lens really does come in handy. And I've used them for years. Now they're not the only lens I use. I do use other lenses as well. And I'm going to cover the three times when another lens is much more useful than an all-in-one zoom lens. But from my examples, you're probably able to see that with proper technique, you can get some gorgeous shots with all-in-one zoom lenses. So you see when I use an all-in-one zoom lens, how about the three times when I won't be using my all-in-one zoom lens? And those are specifically for wildlife. Now, I've been doing a lot of wildlife videos lately on my channel, and I'm using a wildlife lens for those. I'm using a Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens. I'm not normally photographing wildlife specifically with my all-in-one zoom lens. I prefer my wildlife shots with a real wildlife lens. And so that's situation number one where I won't be using my all-in-one zoom lens. Situation number two is when I'm specifically going for wide angle scenes where I want that massive foreground to lead itself into the background and I'm looking for the ways that you can make those foreground elements look a lot bigger which is with your wide angle lens something like my 17 to 40 or also my 15 to 30 does a very nice job of really wide angle specifically looking for foreground type scenes. The third example of when I don't use my all-in-one lens is for macro photography. When I want to get really close to insects or pieces of a flower, things like that, I'm specifically reaching for my macro lens which focuses to life size and I'm not using my all-in-one lens for those types of situations. As always, I appreciate you watching my videos and we'll see you soon.